Not all aim points are created equal, but you guys knew that already because that's the title of the video. For a long time, the Aimpoint Pro was the go-to mid-range option for a red dot. It's rugged, it has good battery life, and it's NV capable, even if its night vision performance was not exactly stellar. Basically, if you wanted a high quality red dot, but you didn't want to shell out for an Aimpoint Micro, you looked for a used Pro, and that was your foot in the door. There have always been cheaper alternatives to the Pro, some of them pretty good, but up until recently, none of them had the same level of quality and performance as a Pro. These days, there are Aimpoint competitors that are substantially better than the Aimpoints, but we'll get to that later on. When the Aimpoint Duty came out, I think there was a lot of anticipation that it would be a cheaper version of the T2, but what it ended up actually being is just a smaller version of the Aimpoint Pro. There are a lot of factors that distinguish the different red dots in the Aimpoint lineup. Some of them are obvious, like the difference in footprint, the size, what type of mount does it use, what type of materials are they made out of. There are also differences in battery type and battery life. Much less obvious are the differences in night vision performance. How well do they work as a passive aiming option when used with nods? With most red dots, this is really difficult to figure out because you have to do a whole bunch of testing in a bunch of different lighting conditions with a bunch of different dots side by side, and you have to pay attention to a lot of the small details. Luckily, when it comes to Aimpoint, they do something that I wish more optics manufacturers would do. They publish the exact light transmission statistics on their website under each product listing. If we take a look at these figures, it becomes immediately obvious why the Aimpoint Pro doesn't perform as well as an Aimpoint T2. Same goes for the Aimpoint Duty, and also for older generations of Aimpoint sites. Let's talk about the recent history of Aimpoint's red dot offerings, going back to the Comp M2, aka the M68 CCO, which in a lot of ways is the first modern red dot. The Comp M2 has a 4 MOA dot, it has pretty poor NV performance, both rated by Aimpoint and confirmed by me, subjectively, and it had an at the time insanely long battery life of 10,000 hours using one of those little button cells called like a DL31N or whatever the hell Energizer calls it. The successor to the Comp M2 was the Comp M3, which was available with a 2 or a 4 MOA dot option and has greatly improved night vision performance, as we can see by the statistics on Aimpoint's website. It also had a much more efficient emitter technology, leading to 30,000 hours of battery life with the same settings and the same battery. The Aimpoint Pro Patrol Rifle Optic came out after the Comp M2 and Comp M3, and you would think that it would have, at the very least, the same performance as the Comp M3, if not slightly better. The Pro is more of a hybrid of the Comp M2 and the Comp M3. It has a 2 MOA dot like the Comp M3, but it's still rated with the same light transmission numbers as the older Comp M2. Sure enough, when I compared an Aimpoint Pro side by side with a Comp M3, the M3 absolutely dominates the Pro. Aimpoint has also regularly offered cheaper alternatives to their flagship models. For example, the Comp ML2 and Comp ML3 are cheaper, maybe law enforcement oriented models of the Comp M2 and M3. If you are looking to shop for an old Aimpoint, make sure you are not getting an ML2 or ML3 by accident. They aren't worth nearly as much because their performance is significantly worse. There was also a cheaper, not night vision compatible alternative to the Pro called the ACO, Advanced Carbine Optic. That followed the same model as the Comp MLs. It has less battery life and no night vision settings compared to the Aimpoint Pro. Aimpoint's newer models like the Micro T1 and T2, as well as the Comp M4 and Comp M5, are a significant leap forward. They use much more common battery types and have longer battery life than the older Comp M3. But what's really important to note is that their night vision performance has stayed exactly the same. The only real difference is that the Comp M4, the big beast of an optic powered by a AA battery, has 7 night vision settings instead of the typical Aimpoint 4. I have never found the night vision settings on a Comp M3 or a T2 or an M5 to be a problem, but I guess having a couple extra doesn't really hurt. It seems to me like Aimpoint has hit a comfortable ceiling when it comes to night vision light transmission and night vision passive aiming performance. Their current flagship models, the Comp M4, M5, M5B, T2, still perform the same under nods as the old Comp M3. So, if you're looking to buy an Aimpoint and save a little bit of money and passive aiming performance is important to you, the Comp M3 is actually a really good buy. It's pretty common to find a used Comp M3 for sale at about the same price as a new Aimpoint Pro. And just speaking for myself, I'd much rather have the Comp M3 than the Pro. The Aimpoint Duty is a bit of an outlier though. The light transmission numbers Aimpoint gives for their other optics are pretty consistent. The lower end optics have a reduced percentage of light transmission and it's also in a narrower bandwidth range. 
From the Comp M3 all the way to now, all of their top end models have the same bandwidth of 420 to 900 nanometers with 70% light transmission. The older generation Comp M2 and the less expensive Pro have a reduced bandwidth range of 420 to 700 nanometers and a transmission percentage of only 60%. The Duty has a much higher light transmission rating of 85%. However, it has an even further reduced bandwidth compared to the Comp M2 and the Pro, 420 to 620 nanometers. Unfortunately, it seems like the bandwidth has more to do with passive aiming performance than the light transmission percentage. The Aimpoint Duty looks quite a lot worse than a Comp M3 or a T2. In my testing, it's pretty much on par with the older generation Holosun red dots. The Duty still has a couple of advantages over an older, cheaper Holosun. One is that it still has better brightness settings. There are four night vision settings instead of two, like on the older Holosuns. Also, they are spaced better and they get a little bit dimmer. The Duty also has coatings that seem to reject glare and reflections a lot better than some of the older Holosuns. So where does the Duty fall into the current Aimpoint catalog? I think it's a better buy than the Aimpoint Pro. The night vision performance is only very slightly worse, if even at all. The Duty has the advantages of better battery life with a much more common battery. It's smaller and lighter, it comes with a less obtrusive mount, and it's also compatible with a new version of ScalarWorks mount that puts it at the proper 1.93 height if you want to go aftermarket. So as of right now, I would get a Duty before I would get a Pro. But, honestly, I still wouldn't get a Duty. The Duty and the Pro are both substantially outperformed in their price category by new optics like the Romeo 4 XT Pro and 4T Pro. All of these optics cost when new right around $450 to $500, but the Romeo 4 XT Pro and 4T Pro come with excellent mounts and have phenomenal night vision performance, on par with an Aimpoint T2. On top of all of their other features like much longer battery life, reticle options, as well as the fact that they have a lot less tint than optics like the Aimpoint Duty. I know some people, for some reason, are not able to see the tint on the Aimpoint Duty. I think those people are probably colorblind. It's definitely there. I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but it's definitely there. Aimpoints still have a reputation of durability, reliability, quality control, and the cool factor of having a no-shit aimpoint on your gun instead of an optic from those up-and-coming whippersnappers over at the Sig Sauer Electro-Optics division. So there you have it. I hope I'm not accidentally spilling the beans that the Aimpoint Comp M3 is still the best value in red dots today. I think the only thing keeping the price down on the Comp M3 is that, first of all, nobody has apparently noticed that the night vision performance is just as good as a T2, and the fact that, as far as I know, the Comp M3 isn't clone correct for anything. It's also funny to see guys buy an Aimpoint Pro and then go to great lengths to source the original Comp M2 and Comp M3 battery cap, bikini covers, all that stuff, to make the Pro look a little more clone correct. I will absolutely never understand those people. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this channel, please subscribe so you can see more videos. That always helps me out. You can also support me directly via Subscribestar, link in the video description. There's also a link to my Linktree page in the video description that will have various social media links as well as sponsor and affiliate links if you want to further support the channel. Let me know, as always, if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.